Last year marked the time when phablets ganged up on the 6 inch display barrier and the empty market niche suddenly started teeming with competition from every major manufacturer like Samsung, HTC, LG and Nokia. Sony outed the jaw-dropping 6.4 inch uh, Z Ultra phablet then, cramming top shelf specs in an ultra thin waterproof body. This year Sony is on a quest to conquer the mid-range in the category, this is Daniel from Phone Arena presenting the Xperia T2 Ultra. That's uh, a 6 inch phablet with a more affordable price tag that features uh, a 720p display and a Snapdragon 400 processor but sweetens the pot with uh, a 13 megapixel camera and a large battery. Can this price to specs combination make the T2 Ultra take the phablet universe by storm? Let's find out. There is no escaping the fact that the T2 Ultra is a giant handset like the rest of its fellow 6 inchers. It is about the size of the HTC One Max and is taller but less wide than the Lumia 1520. These phone's dimensions uh, make the G Pro 2 appear acceptable for instance and LG's phone is by no means something to carry around comfortably. Sony however made the phablet the slimmest of them all at uh, 0.3 inches and comparatively light for such a big device, so at least lugging it around won't be a literal burden. You can forget about one-handed operation though, this thing has to be held and managed with both palms the vast majority of the time spent with it. The phone is all around plastic with a side rim trying to imitate metal with limited success. There are two speaker grills at the front but only the top one houses an earpiece while the bottom grill just hides the main microphone which is aided by a second one on the back for noise cancelling purposes. The back cover is not removable and the 3000 mAh battery is sealed inside. That same back cover is made of glossy plastic that is a fingerprint and pocket lint magnet attracting every piece of thread that uh, you throw at it so it has to be wiped often. We have the white version so we can only imagine how the back of a black T2 Ultra will look like after some time spent with the handset. The device isn't waterproof like the Z Ultra but Sony kept the protective flaps over the card slots uh, for a more uniform look on the sides. We have the dual SIM version so on the right there are two micro SIM card slots covered with a flap. Further down below are the power lock key, the volume rocker and the two stage camera shutter key all of which feel a bit cheap and flimsy with shallow tactile feedback. The left houses the memory card slot uh, as well as an open micro USB port up top which makes the phablet a bit comfortable to use so with the charging cable plugged in. The screen is where it's at with those 6 inches but the 720 by 1280 pixels of resolution on the triluminous display of the T2 Ultra would be disappointing for some. The panel is with uh, 245 ppi pixel density which would be deemed decent just a year ago but now it's somewhat aging. Small detail and zoomed out text in the browser appear jagged and not as discernible as on a 1080p display. It's not that bad though as you'd be looking at the phablet further afar from your eyes than say you would do with a 5 incher. So for the general user this resolution would be fine. We measured the screen's color temperature to be pretty close to the reference so whites appear right on the spot and not cold. Color representation is slightly off on the phablet, predominantly with the greens which appear a tad oversaturated but overall the display looks good and only a picky eye would notice. Another strong point is the screen's brightness which we measured as more than 500 nits on the high mark for a good LCD display. Unfortunately the panel's coating is rather reflective so outside under direct sunlight you have uh, too much light bouncing back to your eyes if you don't hold uh, the device at the right angle. The viewing angles uh, are a bit more narrow than on the best IPS LCD panels but still very good and a far cry from the poor ones on the Xperia Z or Z1 for example. As any other popular Android smartphone manufacturer, Sony has its own custom Xperia UI user interface. Running on a version of Android 4.3 Jelly Bean, it doesn't go as far in repeating Android as HTC Sense or Samsung's TouchWiz, but it's an okay overlay. In order to achieve differentiation, Sony bets on a few branded apps like the Walkman Music Player or the Timescape uh, Social Aggregator widget. And that's about it, uh, all of the essential apps like phone, contacts, messaging and so on have been customized too. Unfortunately this Xperia UI doesn't offer extra multitasking functions like Samsung's multi-window or LG's uh, dual window modes which are very useful on a phablet. Sony however still offers its uh, small app suite available when you hit the active task key at the right of the home button icon. By default there are 5 apps in the bar like a calculator or a browser window and you can add more apps or widgets uh, either from the tablet or from the play store. They hover on top of anything else uh, you're doing underneath and you can fire up to 5 such resizable windows which is a decent way to multitask uh, on the 6 inch phablet if needed. As any self-respecting phablet maker, Sony has also added interface options that help you use the T2 Ultra with one hand. 
These include the, the usual scooching of the keyboard, dialer or calculator left or right, so you can supposedly reach them with your thumb only when holding the phone with one palm. Moreover, Sony lets you pull down the status bar by double tapping on the on-screen home button and thus read your not notifications uh, without having to prop the phone with the other hand and then scroll the bar downwards. It helps, but the effort you make for simply balancing the phablet with one hand is still significant. A 1.4 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 400 CPU is what powers the T2 Ultra with uh, an Adreno 305 graphics crunching unit. This chipset occupies the lower mid-range realm of Qualcomm's mobile silicon line, so don't expect uh, any performance wonders, more so when Sony has paired it with uh, 1GB of RAM. This combination simply does the job, the interface behavior is uh, adequate without choppy movements or annoying lag, but it's not uh, buttery smooth either. The T2 Ultra comes with 8GB of internal storage, of which only about 4 gigs are user available, but you have a microSD card slot on the left for memory expansion covered with a protective flap. Sony uses Android's default Chrome browser on the T2 Ultra, whose performance is adequate when it comes to panning, scrolling or zooming. The pixel density is a minor annoyance compared with all those 1080p displays, as the text here looks uh, less detailed and legible when zoomed out, and a tad jagged even when zoomed in. The phone uh, offers up to 42 megabits per second download speeds, uh, in 3G GSM mode, but uh, its modem doesn't have support for the frequency bands of uh, T-Mobile in the US, for example. It also has uh, Hexaband 4G LTE, but uh, again with uh, European Asian frequencies, as that's the dual SIM phone's target market. We get a dedicated SIM card management app, which uh, lets you assign a primary card, rename the two, or set roaming and data download preferences for each. The T2 Ultra is a dual SIM active device, meaning that it comes with two transceivers, letting you receive calls on both SIM cards. The handset offers uh, a full suite, uh, that's Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Direct, uh, Bluetooth 4.0, assisted GPS and the ONA connectivity, throwing in NFC and even FM radio. Wired connectivity is supplied via the MHL port at the right side of the handset for TV out purposes. Sony uses its album app in place of a stock gallery and offers plenty of picture editing modes that can be used from within the app's interface. Your video collection goes uh, in the Movies app, which also boasts uh, a pretty interface with footage previews. The Xperia interface has uh, one of the nicest music players from all manufacturer overlays out there. It is Walkman branded and offers a very appealing and easy to use interface with plenty of categorization options and sound modes to choose from. The headset output is puny, which your ears might be thankful for, but the loudspeaker is rather deafening. We measured uh, 81 decibels. Uh, which puts it in a tad stronger position even from such uh, thumpers like the HTC One or the Note 3. The sound output quality from the speaker is also very good with no audible distortions and a relatively full sound. The default video player runs every popular format you throw at it, including DivX, XVAD and MKV files up to 1080p in resolution. It also supports uh, plenty of settings like uh, loop mode or subtitle support. The footage uh, looks pretty on the large bright display too. The 13 megapixel camera on the back of the T2 Ultra is managed by all the bells and whistles you'd expect from Sony's Xperia UI camera app, like a scene recognition mode that can fire 36 different scene presets automatically, including decisions on whether to shoot in an HDR mode or not, depending on the scene in front of the lens. We also get augmented reality overlays and a bunch of manual scene modes like panorama. By default, the phablet shoots in a wide format, which is about 9 megapixels, so if you want to use the full 13 megapixel resolution of the camera, you have to change it to 4x3 manually from the app settings. The phone focuses and snaps quickly for about a second, while the shot-to-shot -shot times are average uh, about 3 to 5 seconds, depending on the scene and whether the HDR mode is on or not. The superior auto mode gets uh, the correct scene settings uh, most of the time. The white balance and exposure calculations of the camera software combo are pretty spot on the vast majority of the time, with only a few photos uh, that we know is a slightly colder casting in reality, both uh, indoors and out. Otherwise, the pictures come out with a rather accurate color representation and a very pleasant to look at. The camera captures plenty of detail in line with uh, what one expects from a 13 megapixel shooter. Indoors, the phablet performed very well, keeping noise in check and shooting clean and well exposed photos. The white balance uh, got thrown off a few times in a dark environment, resulting in an overly cold or warm cast veiled over the scene. The LED flash uh, did a fine job in low light scenarios. 
illuminating the scene quite uh, evenly from about 5 feet distance. We get smooth 30 frames per second 1080p video recording from the T-Ultras camera. The device is quick to adjust the exposure when you are panning around with it and doesn't skip frames or insert artifacts. The sound recorded with the video is strong and clean too. In the end we have to say that Sony did an excellent job with the Xperia T2 Ultra. Granted, it is a big handset, but you can't expect anything less from a 6-inch phablet, plus uh, it is very thin and light for the screen size. We could also expect a bit more from the screen's pixel density, but it's a worthy trade-off for the phone's price and performance. When we stack uh, the longest battery life we've ever measured on a mobile device, with the very good pictures and video quality produced by the phablet's 13-megapixel camera and the dual-sim active functionality, we can pronounce the T2 Ultra as one of the best phablets in the mid-range category. You can get much more for about $430 without subsidies, yet uh, there are some pretty decent alternatives out there for a similar price or less, like the Xperia Z Ultra for example, or Samsung's Galaxy Mega 6.3. Going a Benjamin higher in price, you face the real 6-inch 1080p competition such as the HC1 Max or the LG G Pro 2. If you're looking for a still large screen, but uh, smaller dimensions than this one, Samsung's 5.7-inch Note 3 is always a great choice with its S Pen stylus functionality. All of these cost more, however, and don't have the stellar battery life of the T2 Ultra. All in all, Sony has managed to create a very appealing mid-range phablet uh, with this one here. That's a much less explored uh, market niche, plus uh, it spiced the offer up with the longest battery life we've ever measured on a mobile device. That's 10 plus hours of screen on time and a good 30 megapixel camera. Thus, we can wholeheartedly recommend the Xperia T2 Ultra if you're into them 6 inches but looking to score on a tight budget. This was a video review of the Sony Xperia T2 Ultra. For more information about this and other phablets, you can visit us at phonearena.com. Thanks for watching.